Tradcast Express. Tradcast Express, it's Tuesday, January 30th, 2024. Being a Pope-splainer in our times is a dangerous undertaking. You know what I'm talking about, right? A Pope-splainer, so-called, is basically an apologist for the supposed Pope, specifically Jorge Bergoglio, otherwise known as Pope Francis. The Pope's planer's task is to explain why whatever heretical, blasphemous, idiotic, or otherwise scandalous thing Francis just said or did, he did not, in fact, just say or do. Or if he did, he didn't mean it. Or if he did mean it, he's still not guilty because of a footnote over here or a misunderstanding over there. Or because he's a Jesuit or his native language is Spanish or he's well into his 80s or some other excuse that is meant to get him off the hook. Some hard-working Pope-splainers of the last 10 years have included the Reverend John Zulstorff, who's long given that up, Jimmy Aiken, who's also stopped defending Francis three times a week, and Dave Armstrong, who is probably still at it. I'm not including Michael Voris in this list because he wasn't really a Pope-splainer, His strategy for years was basically to spin Francis into an ultra-conservative, apparently thinking that the readers of his website were too dumb to look at other news sources as well. Voris would simply report only on whatever orthodox words of Francis he could find and ignore all the rest. We called it the Voris virus, and his Vortex program, the Ignortex, for a reason. It's true that that changed eventually, he did start covering scandals, but for the first few years, that's exactly what he did. Pope Francis talks like a pope, like the successor to St. Peter. At present, however, the Pope's splainer extraordinaire, who I think is most deserving of the title and even has a shirt with the label Pope Splainer on it, is no doubt Michael Lofton of the Reason and Theology website. When it comes to defending Bergoglio, supposedly the Pope, the Vicar of Christ, Lofton doesn't miss a beat. Therefore, it's rather curious that there is one recent incident Lofton has ignored completely, and I think I know why. But first, let's go back in time a little bit to April 18th, 2023. On that day, a curious thing happened at the Basilica of St. John Lateran in Rome. St. John Lateran is not just any historic basilica, it is the Cathedral of the Pope. That's right. No, it's not St. Peter's in the Vatican, that's just an important basilica. The Papal Cathedral is that of St. John Lateran. So, what happened there that day? An Anglican bishop, Jonathan Baker, accompanied by 49 other Anglican clerics, offered a Eucharistic liturgy, a Mass, on the main altar of the Catholic Cathedral. That's a problem not simply because Anglicanism is a false religion and its rites and ceremonies constitute false worship, but also because Anglican ordinations are invalid, and so whatever they offered there, it was certainly not a valid Mass. And that's not simply my judgment, it's the solemn and definitive magisterial judgment of the Supreme Pontiff of the Roman Catholic Church, Leo XIII. According to his Apostolic Constitution Apostolice Curae, published in 1896, Anglican ordinations are invalid. That means that Bishop Baker is only Mr. Baker. He is neither a bishop nor even a priest, but just a layman. The invalidity of Anglican orders is affirmed officially even by the Vatican II Church, In other words, their own Vatican II magisterium holds that Anglican orders are invalid. Okay, so that was a big scandal, but it wasn't entirely clear whether Pope Francis had permitted the Anglican pseudo-bishop to perform this Eucharist in the papal cathedral or not. Certainly somebody in charge there had permitted it, but whether Francis knew about it and approved it That was never demonstrated to be the case, and so we cannot affirm that he did. We simply don't know. After enough of a ruckus ensued over this, 
one of the authorities at St. John Lateran released a statement saying there had been some kind of failure in communication, and he expressed his deep regret. Meanwhile, however, Recognize and Resist YouTuber Taylor Marshall had rashly made a video accusing Francis himself of knowing about and approving this without any real evidence. And so that was basically a real feast for Michael Lofton, who was able to slam Marshall and defend his supposed pope from those evil accusers who would dare to suggest that he, the vicar of Christ himself, would ever possibly authorize an invalid Anglican mass in a Catholic church. Here is an almost three-minute compilation of various soundbites taken from Lofton's video, Taylor Marshall Spreads Lie About Pope and Anglican Mass, published on April 21st, 2023. These are different snippets I've stitched together, and I'm separating them with a little accent sound to indicate a skip. Go ahead and listen to how passionately and confidently Lofton defends Francis, and then I'll tell you the rest of the story. Hey everybody, welcome back to Reason and Theology. Your host, Michael, on a Friday. I want to review Taylor Marshall's video uh, spreading the lie that Pope Francis allowed a fake mass by a fake bishop on an altar in Rome. However, I do agree that it would be a fake mass in a uh, fake bishop since it was an Anglican bishop who celebrated the liturgy, which I think is tragic. That certainly should not have been um, allowed. And however this happened, there was somebody who certainly dropped the ball in light of the fact that Anglican masses are invalid per Pope Leo XIII due to the invalidity of their order. So this is certainly an issue. It needs to be corrected. It doesn't ever need to happen again because at the end of the day, this is simulating a mass. It's not actually a mass itself. So I agree with the fake mass and fake bishop part, but the claim is Pope Francis allowed it to take place at St. John Lateran's Basilica. And this is a lie. Uh, this is spreading a lie, misinformation, and stirring people up in their passions to get people all, um, you know, angry and upset with Pope Francis. And of course, this lie is spreading all over social media. And now, as you could imagine, the orthobros, that is, some of the more toxic online orthodox apologists, are trying to use this against catholic and saying you know look your pope approves of fake anglican masses and stuff like that and um so they're of course watching radical traditionalist catholics who are spreading this lie and they're trying to use it against us so once again the radical traditionalists are wreaking havoc upon the church stirring people's passions up and falsely accusing the holy father truly tragic the enemies of the church are now using this against the Catholic Church to mock the Catholic Church. They are watching this stuff, and they're using it as ammunition against the Catholic Church. Look, looks like the people who are in charge of booking at St. John Lateran's. Yeah. Whoever made this mistake probably needs to be fired, and you need to get somebody more reliable. Just, just FYI. <laughs> If if you're booking people who aren't actually valid priests and bishops to celebrate liturgies on a Catholic altar, you you might need to get somebody else in charge. So there, there's certainly some fault uh, here with whoever did it, but but it can't be blamed on Pope Francis or any of the dicasteries that represent him. Frankly, let's just make sure this doesn't happen again. Can can we do that? That'd be helpful. Yeah, wouldn't that be helpful? Well, I already said it's a dangerous job being a Pope Splainer in our day under Jorge Bergoglio. Lofton was foolish enough to go all in for Francis. He didn't just say that there is no evidence that Francis knew about this and that it's wrong to rashly accuse the Pope. But no, he went much further. He said that Francis would have given a firm no if he had been asked for permission in advance. Here's another soundbite from the same video. I, I think the dicastery, uh, one of the dicasteries, if not the Holy Father himself, should have been involved in making this decision, which would have been a firm no. 
But since they weren't involved, and this shows you they weren't involved, Pope Francis wasn't involved, and none of the dicasteries die were involved, you know, you can't blame this on Pope Francis um, or any of his direct representatives in the dicastery. Oh, well, that was on April 21st, 2023. But now let's fast forward to January 25th, 2024. As part of the annual Week of Prayer for Christian Unity, a bunch of Anglicans were visiting Rome, including Justin Welby, the so-called Archbishop of Canterbury. He's the highest-ranking clergyman in the Anglican Church. But having only Anglican orders, he too is not validly ordained. In other words, the Archbishop of Canterbury is in reality only the Archlayman of Canterbury. And once again, that is so even for the Vatican II Church. Wouldn't it be a shame now if Pope Francis had given authorization to the Archlayman of Canterbury to offer an invalid Eucharistic liturgy in one of the historic Catholic basilicas in Rome? Not St. John Lateran, granted, but yes, this time Pope Francis himself gave permission for Justin Welby to defile the Basilica of St. Bartholomew with an invalid Anglican Mass. How do we know that? We know it because Welby himself proclaimed it from the pulpit. Gerard O'Connell, a Vatican journalist writing for the Novus Ordo Jesuit rag America, published a tweet with a brief video clip of Welby solemnly processing into the sanctuary to begin his heretical and invalid liturgy. O'Connell writes, quote, Archbishop Justin Welby, the Anglican Archbishop of Canterbury, arrives to celebrate the Holy Eucharist in St. Bartholomew's Church on Tiber Island, Rome, January 25th, the Feast of the Conversion of St. Paul. He does so, he said, with the permission of the Bishop of Rome, Pope Francis, unquote. LifeSite had a whole article on this, and I'm going to link it in the show notes. It goes without saying that Michael Lofton now has more than just egg on his face. He's got a whole omelet. To show how devastating that news is to Lofton's position, let's replay the three-minute clip in which he takes to task those who would be so evil as to accuse Francis of authorizing an invalid Anglican service. Hey everybody, welcome back to Reason and Theology. Your host, Michael, on a Friday, I want to review Taylor Marshall's video uh, spreading the lie that Pope Francis allowed a fake mass by a fake bishop on an altar in Rome. However, I do agree that it would be a fake mass in a uh, fake bishop since it was an Anglican bishop who celebrated the liturgy, which I think is tragic that certainly should not have been um, allowed. And however this happened, there was somebody who certainly dropped the ball in light of the fact that Anglican masses are invalid per Pope Leo XIII due to the invalidity of their order. So this is certainly an issue. It needs to be corrected. It doesn't ever need to happen again because at the end of the day, this is simulating a mass. It's not actually a mass itself. So I agree with the fake mass and fake bishop part, but the claim is Pope Francis allowed it to take place at St. John Lateran's Basilica. And this is a lie. Uh, this is spreading a lie, misinformation, and stirring people up in their passions to get people all, um, you know, angry and upset with Pope Francis. And of course, this lie is spreading all over social media. And now, as you can imagine, the orthobros, that is, some of the more toxic online orthodox apologists, are trying to use this against Catholic and saying, you know, look, your pope approves of fake Anglican masses and stuff like that. And um, so they're, of course, watching radical traditionalist Catholics who are spreading this lie, and they're trying to use it against us. So once again, the radical traditionalists are wreaking havoc upon the church, stirring people's passions up and falsely accusing the Holy Father. Truly tragic. The enemies of the church are now using this against the Catholic church to mock the Catholic church. They are watching this stuff and they're using it as ammunition against the Catholic church. 
look looks like the people who are in charge of booking at St. John Lateran's. Yeah. Whoever made this mistake probably needs to be fired and you need to get somebody more reliable. Just just FYI. <laughs> if if you're booking people who aren't actually valid priests and bishops to celebrate liturgies on a Catholic altar, you you might need to get somebody else in charge. So there, there's certainly some fault uh, here with whoever did it, but but it can't be blamed on Pope Francis or any of the dicasteries that represent him, frankly. Let's just make sure this doesn't happen again. Can, can we do that? That'd be helpful. Yeah, some things just don't age well. But okay, let's go ahead now and look at Lofton's reaction to the news that the Archlayman of Canterbury had papal permission to defile the Catholic Basilica of St. Bartholomew. That's right, not a word from the professional Pope Splainer. Not a word. At least not in public, and not as of the recording of this podcast, to my knowledge. And I checked the website and his YouTube channel and his Twitter feed. It's as if the whole thing hadn't happened. Now, Lofton's passionate 2023 video defending Francis against the charge of permitting an invalid Anglican Mass, that video, as of the recording of this podcast, has almost 29,000 views. That's a lot of people. And I think it would be a real shame if those who watched that weren't now informed that this time around, their Pope has approved the invalid Anglican Mess performed by Justin Welby. And so this little podcast is trying to make its own modest contribution to help get the message out to at least a tiny fraction of those 29,000 viewers, since obviously Lofton himself isn't doing it. Whoever made this mistake probably needs to be fired, and you need to get somebody more reliable. As I said at the beginning, being a Pope Splainer in our times is a dangerous undertaking. Lofton had put all his eggs in one basket, and now it turns out it was the wrong basket. Tradcast Express is a production of Novos Ordo Watch. Check us out at tradcast.org, and if you like what we're doing, please consider making a tax-deductible contribution at novosordowatch.org slash donate.